Uh, hello! It says we're live. So, welcome to the Bubblegum Social Club, where I make my friends watch stuff that I like, and then I make them talk about it, because they love me. Hi, Samantha. Hey! <laughs> so, um, I asked Samantha to watch the first episode of Gem and the Holograms, which I grew up watching the first two episodes as a movie, over and over and over again. And what did you think of the first episode, slash first half of the movie? <laughs> Well, I wasn't thinking of it as a first half of a movie. Well, I, know, I'm I'm just explaining. Explaining. I may have thought of it differently. I know, I know, but I'm just, I'm trying to be quickly explaining the context of me, but we all know right, our Right, right. Well, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it ended, and I sort of looked at the screen like, the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, cursing. It, um, it, was, um, it was interesting. I, I'm not sure what, what I watched, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those who don't know, Gem and the Holograms was a cartoon. I'm, uh, from what I understand, it started in the 80s, and uh, in the 90s, I watched 85, it. 85, I think. Wow, look at you, knowledge. I, I looked at the date, because I was like, please tell me this was in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I know, the animation is like, wow, her arms are really long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, people's voices don't match with like the person who's supposed to be talking, but anyway, um, <laughs> and uh, when it was made, I didn't tell you this yet, but when it was made, it was sandwiched between two episodes of G.I. Joe, so they were like, how do we keep the boys watching this? Hmm. And I will tell you in a minute their approach to that, but so I grew up watching um, The Gem and the Holograms, two movies, one was like the introduction and two was like Glitter and Gold, which was like a two-parter turned into a movie, and then... A second episode where she was on Broadway, and I just remembered that. But yeah, anyway, on VHS. Woo! Have you kids heard of VHS? Yeah. <laughs> that broke a lot. Um, hmm. So, the episode we watched, here is a quick summary. I'm going to try to do as fast as I can. Gem of the Holograms is a cartoon mainly about Jerrica Benton. Her father recently passed away, leaving her Starlight House, a house for foster girls that I guess she runs, and half of his company, Starlight Music. Eric Raymond owns the other half. Ominous music. Starlight House is falling apart, and so Jerka goes to Starlight Music to ask for money. She finds Eric has replaced everybody that she knows there, is refusing to give her any help, and has signed the Misfits, an all-female band of sorts, um, to the label. The Misfits are mean, rude, loud, obnoxious, and they fight dirty. Eric tells Jerka... I keep wanting to say Erica. <laughs> Eric tells Erica that he's setting up this rigged battle of the band so that the misfits can win and then, I guess, become famous. And she can't stand that. He's using her father's company to promote this trash, to use her words. Back home at Starlight House, she's discussing this with all her friends, um, all her female friends, uh, all who apparently live and work at Starlight House, I guess. Uh, she opens a package that arrived that had earrings. The earrings sparkle, and then a purple woman appears and tells her that to come follow them to this abandoned... Um, abandoned drive-in theater. I was going to say warehouse. Abandoned drive-in theater where they magically go through a wall and find that Jerka's father left her a hologram machine made of magic called Synergy. That is the purple woman slash machine. And real clothes and instruments and a car that's really cool. And everybody's excited. And then they had to plan. They're going to crash the battle of the bands. Uh, Jerka is going to turn into Jim using the magic of holograms. And the rest of the band is going to be the holograms, which is Gem and the holograms. So I'm explaining this way too much. Um, and so they play, and Eric gets angry, and Jerka and Eric fight. But then a rich man comes along and says, "Hey, I know what we can do. We'll have another battle of the bands. The misfits and Gem and the holograms will play, and whoever wins gets a lot of money and a mansion. It's really, really nice." The misfits are like, "No, that's dumb. We don't like you." So they steal, even though Eric says yes. But they steal the holograms van and trash all their instruments and then an ensuing car chase results in Jerrica and holograms hanging off the edge of a cliff. What will happen next? And then they get saved from by Rio Pacheco or Jerrica's boyfriend and then Erica's like we'll make them nervous by sending Zipper, this thuggish dude, to go steal some stuff and make noise. And what happens is they get he gets caught by the holograms in Starlight House and then he runs and runs into Kimber and she drops her fiery lantern and the whole house catches on fire. And then dun 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 dun, dun music plays. That was it. That was my reenactment. I hope it was very entertaining. <laughs> I kind of lost track of where I was reading, so I had to just make it up as I was going. That's that. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Covered everything. I covered everything. <laughs> I was just gonna write like a general introduction, and then I was like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Get the main points. So yeah. 
And um, I guess Samantha watched that and thought, well, that's a thing that exists in the world. <laughs> Basically, it ended and it was like, well, that just happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I watched it so many times and it was such a big deal to me. And I think part of um, my idea growing up of wanting to be like, I created this whole imaginary world where I was both a rock star and like a businesswoman. Mm. I, think I wonder where I got that from. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it was from watching this 50 million times. So the point that there are certain lines that I can recite. Oh, yeah. That Other makes sense. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, you, you showed me, and I, I knew the name of it because I, you showed me an episode. It must have been a random episode because I don't think it was this one um, was years and years ago. Um, and it was fun and entertaining. I think, I think that I still related less to this than other things you showed me, like other cartoons that you showed me. That I remember a little more clear, more clearly than this, so it just didn't strike me. It didn't. I didn't have an impression on me as as much as I think it probably did on a lot of other people. Yeah. Well, they're even making a, a remake, not a remake, a movie. I heard this. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's going to be like different and have to do with social media. So I guess it's more like she's a YouTube. I'm just guessing that she's like a YouTube sensation or something. And they're all, they all seem to be younger because they're all like kids who were recently on the Disney Channel, mm -hmm. including um, the girl who plays Stella on um, Lemonade Mouth, the oh. robot. Yeah, she's going to play Aja. And I am ecstatic about that because <laughs> I'm like, wow, marry the two things that I love. Is it, is it live action? Yeah, it's live action. It's that's what everybody's like not sure because they didn't even consult the uh, the woman who created the show. Like, they didn't talk to her at all until she was like, yeah, well, nobody talked to me about it. And everybody was like, oh, how could you not talk to the creator of the show about Jim and the Holograms? Seriously. And, and so then after that, they decided to. I tried to follow their Tumblr account because they were like, we'll crowdsource the movie and our fans can, like, you know, make fan mm -hmm. art. Maybe it'll be the movie and you can, everybody can audition. And everybody was like, are you sure this is the best way? And it's like all dudes. All dudes like <laughs> doing the movie. And you're like, well, I mean, I'm, yeah, go for it. Just maybe consult a diverse group of people to see if you're getting what you think you're getting. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I think I'm doing something, and I find out I'm doing the opposite. So, you know, consulting a diverse group of people to figure out what kind of impressions they get. Not like a focus group, but like, you know, people you know who hopefully you have a diverse group of friends. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. But when I found out, like, who they cast for Aja, I was ecstatic because it's Haley Kyoko from... Lemonade Mouth and many other things. <laughs> look her up on iTunes. I mean, iTunes, IMDb. Also iTunes. Look her up everywhere. Um, and then the girl who's playing Kimber was on Ant Farm, and she played, like, the obnoxious popular girl. But mm -hmm. when I found out she was playing Kimber, I was like, that is perfect casting. So I have, like, this glimmer of hope that it's going to be really fun, even if it's not going to be very true to the material. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. And I didn't want to make you watch the second one, because I felt like it would be really long, and you would have been like, why? Why is she doing it? <laughs> Well, maybe that would have helped. That might have made that might have made it more of a package thing. Well, I was left I'll being like, do that next mm -hmm. time. <laughs> <laughs> because um, so the, what I uh, I had the DVD set. You can see it back here, there, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a bunch of interviews with the creator, and she explained from what I remember. It was a long time since I watched it that. Um, because they were sandwiched between G.I. Joe episodes, they just added a lot of, like, cliffhanger action stuff, like, you know, them literally hanging off a cliff yeah. and, you know, catching fire to the house and things like ha that happen frequently. And I think that's one of the reasons I liked it so much, because there was always something happening, always. Mm -hmm. Even my attention span, even though it's made worse by current technology, like, I just <laughs> love that, like, frenetic energy. Yeah. I think maybe that's one of the things that also that didn't stick with me, just because I, I didn't, I mean, I, because I didn't see it as a kid, and when you're a kid, you do have kind of that boundless sort of, I need things happening every moment in my cartoons or in my shows, okay. and so watching it older, I was sort of like, they're not developing anything, there's just things <laughs> happening, and I don't understand, and this is stupid. <laughs> there's just something, and, and it was, you know, just coupled with sort of corny 80s dialogue, and I just I was like, I can't get into this. I really want to, but I can't. This is so weird. So the thing is, that, like, for me, this was what Lemonade Mouth would have been as, as a kid. You know, like, if I was growing up 
more recent right. I had seen Lemonade Mouth, this would have been the same thing. Like, I want to be in a band, and I want to be a smart mm -hmm. person who does things cool. You know, mm -hmm. so this is what I watched over and over again until, like, Lizzie McGuire came along. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Lizzie McGuire, although it, she annoyed me, but I liked it. But, yeah, no, I... I feel like even if I saw this as a kid, there's just something about it that I didn't quite connect to because I'd still, like, there was enough unrealisticness in it. And, and I mean, car obviously cartoons and movies, even like Lemonade Mouth, are unrealistic, but you can still connect to them somehow. Well, I didn't find uh, any threads in here to connect to. I just it? thought the characters were too one-dimensional, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I kind of, I don't feel like the characters are one-dimensional, but I feel that way about, like, Sound of Music and Mary Poppins, where I'm like, cool, that's, they're singing, that's nice. Okay, well, mm -hmm. I'm going to go get some popcorn, and you guys yeah. do I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, I never, I, I remember watching parts of those movies, and I enjoyed Mary Poppins, although, like, the bird thing scared me. <laughs> I get that. Um, but I never was like, yes, this is my jam. Like, I can do, like, this is my thing. I'm so into this. I, know, I don't know that I would ever call Mary Poppins a jam for me, but... Penguins! Penguins are awesome, and they dance and sing. And the only reason I connect to the penguins is because at Disneyland they have the Jolly Holiday Cafe. Right. <laughs> um, but I, but that kind of stuff is nostalgic for me. Well, that's what I'm saying, that that's nostalgic for you, and, like, Gem and the Holograms is, like, that. Yeah, and I recognize that they're ridiculous, but they still make me feel really, really, that those, like, intense nostalgia feelings. Yeah, that's how so I feel about thing. Gem, because that was, that was, like, the thing that I want, I, like, I wanted to be Gem or a misfit all the time. Really? <laughs> like, I have this, I, would, like, would act out. Like, my dad would be, like, you know, reading on the couch, and I would be, like, acting out Gem and the holograms <laughs> at certain parts. And then I would, like, switch from wanting to be Gem and wanting to be one of the misfits, mainly because the misfits just said whatever they wanted to say. Like, they didn't worry about being polite. And, like, as a kid... This is some context. As a kid, I read books for kids about being polite for fun. So <laughs> seeing characters who were like, screw that, I'm going to do whatever I want, was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this idea that you could basically do whatever you want and have very few repercussions, except for people hating That's you. the material point, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, you know, calling people out on stuff and, you know, being mean. And I mean, there were a few things they did that were, like, horrifying, like kidnapping children and locking them inside of trunks stuff like that, <laughs> setting a bomb in a house. There's a lot of things Jim and the Holograms could have, I mean, uh, the Misfits could have gone to jail for, like a lot of things. <laughs> but the important, but you hope that kids who are similar to you and saying, I want to be like that and I want to say what I mean, and do, you'd think there'd be characters that could be more positive about that. The thing is that, like, um, they never win. Like, Jim always wins, always. Even when mm -hmm. it's, like, dire and you're like, oh, even, so, there's an entire episode where they're like, the Misfits plan this whole, like, media frenzy over who is Jem, like, trying to figure out who she mm -hmm. is. And in the end, Jem prevails by saying, like, well, what does that matter? Like, what matters is what you do, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, that's not the... I'm not explaining it right. It sounds really pretty when she says it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, can, I can hear it. But, but, the, but the important thing about that, what you just said, is that that tells the kids watching it that she is the good, one, the good yeah. character. Well, and the right misfits are... You know, the misfits really are jerks. They're even jerks to each other. They're not even, yeah. like, really good friends. They're mean to each other. Mm -hmm. So... The, the connection that the holograms have, even when they fight, they make up, and, and they have, like, a family, you know, like, that's, you know, so they, I don't know. And Jerrica always stood up, up against Eric Raymond. Who mm -hmm. was, that, that I thought was pretty cool. Was yeah, her he was just like, no, you, I'm not having any of this. You're yeah. an awful person. This is not okay. And yeah. I always loved that about her, because she just did not... She didn't take anything from anybody, and if they messed with her, she found she would not necessarily like get in their face right away. The way, I mean, she would, but, but not in the way. Of a way, yeah. She would basically make a plan and then execute that plan mm -hmm. successfully and be awesome. And I was like, I want to be Jerry Benton when I grow up, and then maybe. Yeah. I'll yeah. The the thing I got from her, like to me, she was the person who had the most sus substance of every single character. You know, I felt like it felt like like all the substance from everyone else was sort of drained <laughs> into one person <laughs> to me. But she did have this really great presence, and I was like, I could see admiring her as a kid. Or, and that was that was really cool to see like a female character that was like, hang on, 
this is not going to fly. You know, yeah. we're going we're gonna to figure something out. And, and um, he has a boyfriend, but she's not obsessed with her boyfriend. Like, he comes very, and helps, like, thank you. That was very sweet of you. You can leave. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, that's cool. Was he the one that fixing the lights? Was that guy? Yeah. Okay. I like that. I, liked that I thought that dynamic was actually very modern. Yeah. Yeah. He better have purple hair in the movie or I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought that was cool. I thought she she had a good um, personality. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, spoiler, not really. Um, what happens in the show is that when she becomes Jem and starts hanging around Rio, Rio basically double dates both of them, kind of. Lovely. <laughs> really, like as a kid, I never really thought about it because yeah. he, he was the same person, but I didn't realize that he didn't know that. So there were some problems that they had. With that, and I think that the cartoon ended, and she never got to tell him. Interesting. Uh, that was one of those things, kind of like how when you have like two love interests, mm -hmm. like are they gonna get together? Are they not? Are they? You know, like, <laughs> try to keep that up forever. That was kind of like what happened with it. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, but very you know, interesting. And as time goes on, people, they have more interests, and in, like you know, um, Sh Shana. Um, is like a fashion designer and she like designs all these clothes like that's her thing they each have like Kimber's like really into music and I guess Aja is into cars <laughs> I don't really remember all the details on that that's cool. yeah so you know and it's hilarious because like the things that they do they are a lot like uh, Barbie we were talking about before this and you mentioned they reminded you of Barbie with the names and everything in that like they go uh, they go car racing they go to this like hula and end up in said well, one of them's an astronaut <laughs> yeah no really like they, they do everything it's amazing it is exactly like Barbie. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, that, like, there's um, we didn't really have those Barbie, those hilariously fun Barbie cartoons. I haven't seen all of them, but I've seen like clips of them, and they're actually pretty decent. I yeah. mean, I think they're probably more than decent, but just based on what I've seen, and mm -hmm. I remember some on Tumblr. There are some gifts where like they're just Barbie making all of these jokes about like having been everything, so she <laughs> knows how to do everything. Isn't isn't that a joke in Toy Story? Is that? Or is it something else? There is a joke in Toy Story, but there is one in a Barbie movie where, like, okay. Skipper is like, wait, you know how to do this? She's like, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you know how to do this? Like, yeah, totally, of course I know how to do that. <laughs> so, and, you know, and, and they, oh. Jim Holograms was made to sell dolls, which I did not know until I was much older, and I was like, there's dolls that I didn't know? <laughs> so I had a lot of Barbie. Interesting. Talent. Well, I mean, is, is that, I don't know if this is just my overly feminist scope on everything, but, I mean, is that kind of... A, a show geared towards girls that's meant to sell dolls because girls are meant to play with dolls. I don't know. Is that... Uh, every every cartoon is meant to sell toys, a thing that true. I see Very true. recently. And, like, um, for example, from what I understand, and, hey, nerds, if you're listening to this, I could be wrong. I just... This is what I read. Um, that one of my favorite cartoons, Young Justice, got canceled, even though it was amazing, because they didn't sell enough toys. And I was like, mm -hmm. if I had known that, I would have bought toys. <laughs> like, I didn't know that. Anyway, um, in my naive scene, didn't hurt yeah. me. But, like, you know, Transformers, that was made to sell toys. You get all the different like parts. towards boys. Yeah, but, but that's the thing. I, I guess I'm just going off on a tangent on the gen gender. gender. Yeah, no, but, but that's the thing about, like, being a sandwich between G.I. Joe, they mm -hmm. put action in it to make it interesting to boys. Basically. Yeah. And I was like, but I liked it because of that. Now, hey, guess what? I'm a girl. What? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, I think I think that um, based on, like, the structure of, like, okay, we're going to sell toys to girls, so they mm -hmm. have to be dolls, and they have to be pretty, and they have to be, like, magical and musical. Right. Uh, but, oh, we got to put action in it for the boys. And then they happen to create this amazing show with these, like, Pretty feminist characters. Yeah, where they got things done. Like by accident of what they were by, by virtue of what they were trying to do. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Kristen Marks when she talks about it, she she seems pretty amazing the way she writes. She writes comics now too. Oh. Yeah. And so, um, and it's funny because the woman who did the singing voice, and I should have looked this up before this. I terrible. I'm also very tired. Um, she did the singing voice for Jem, and she was ended up being in like a, a band. I think it was called Luna. And um, she's got this amazing voice, but she would be, like, embarrassed to tell people that she was the voice of Jem because it That's was so <laughs> funny. And she wanted to do, really, but it was she needed money, and she ended up being able to do this, and they made her sing higher than she ever thought she you would even be able to. And That's one thing I noticed. That's funny you say that. Like, I was like, wow, her voice is really high. Yeah. And it's, like, the singing voice was good, like, good high. Yeah, she was – I really – 
like the songs. There's some songs where I'm like, meh, but some of them are actually surprisingly good. They were catchy. Yeah. And I thought the, I thought the, um, I don't know if you'll, you'll have to tell me if this is true or not, like the most cartoons are like this. I don't think so. Where they had like the MTV, like, title yeah, was like, of the song. That was totally like a, oh, MTV does that, so we'll do that kind of thing. Like, it, cool. Yeah. I, I, they were kind of copying this idea. And it's funny because um, if you watch Nostalgia Chicks video on Gem and the Holograms, where she talks about how much she does not like Gem and the Holograms, for very valid reasons, um, she talks about, like, what is that supposed to be? Is that part of reality? Do they literally come into the door with, on, like, motorcycles that look like guitars? Is that thing that's actually happening? And I never thought about that, like, ever. I mean, I, I did thought about it, but I was like, that's not the thing that matters to me the most right now. Yeah, no, I was like, to me, it was kind of like, it's happening, but it's not at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I made it very, I don't know. Yeah, well, that, uh, yeah. In cartoons, at least, that kind of thing for me is very easy to accept. Yeah. You know? I was I was fine with that. Um, yeah. Did you notice the fact that the whole hologram thing doesn't make any sense at all? Zero. Yeah, I didn't notice it at all until somebody pointed it out. <laughs> <laughs> Although there were times where I was like, ha. I think as I got older and I would watch it for nostalgia, I'd be like, but wouldn't her clothes, she's wearing long sleeves, and then she changes into Jem, and Jem is wearing short sleeves. How? How does that work? Because that doesn't make sense with light and sound. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were being very, very, very loose with the term hologram. Yeah. Well, it was kind of like Spider-Man, where it's like, genetically mm -hmm. modified, radioactive things will give you power. <laughs> Like, to me, I'm like, you can't get mad at that without getting mad at how superheroes get the superpower. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did you think when Synergy showed up? Did you remember that part? Or Is that with the earrings? Yes. Yeah. Um, I th well, <laughs> for me, I was like, oh, there's the hologram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes sense now. <laughs> the title makes sense, at least. <laughs> That's a very and then it just kept going and going, and they drive through the wall, and they get to that computer's thing that looks like the thing from Captain America 2. The I computer the talks. That, that is a connection. You just made quite a connection. <laughs> like this. That's like the first thing that came to my mind, which is really funny, because I didn't even want to see Captain America 2, and it was a horrible movie. And oh, my God, what is wrong with you? I love that movie. You were insane. I never saw the, I never saw the first one, and everyone tells what? me that's funny. <laughs> you you wound me. I'm internally bleeding from your words. I'm sorry. Are you, I I don't even have words. <laughs> that. I didn't have time. I, well, then why would you see the second one if you haven't seen the first one? I don't know. I was trying to impress somebody. <laughs> oh my god! Did you at least like Falcon? You probably didn't like. Falcon. Yes, I did. I did oh, like Falcon. Ah, I got to you the second he came on. Yes, I loved him. Okay. But anyway, like, the second they walked into that concrete wall and there's that computer thing, I was like, that's like the, the weird talking Soviet version computer from Captain America 2. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they have nothing to do with it. I know, <laughs> I know, but that's exactly what I know, but I just imagine, like, Soviet synergy, and I'm like, mm, no, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All capitalist. I'm sorry for that tangent, but that's exactly what Oh, no, we're going to have words after this is over, just so you know. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, for the record, Captain America 1 is one of my favorite movies. It is one of the movies my brother probably hates the most. So, <laughs> you know, take that with a grain of salt. We all know what my tastes are. So, you know. <laughs> it's a very <coughs> really liked movie, especially compared to the other ones. And it, it honestly, I think you would like it because it is kind of nostalgic to the like more, I don't want to say old school way of making movies, but the story is much more like. I feel like an old classic-ish. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see it because I feel like, at least to me, seeing the second one, Captain America is a very boring superhero. Yeah, you're dead to me. <laughs> 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 no, um, you, yeah, you gotta see the, you gotta see the first one. You can't see the second one if you just see the first one. I know. I figured they were. I thought they were standalones. No, no. They. It's funny. I heard this whole conversation. When was that? Some. Or maybe I read it. I don't know. I heard it somewhere <laughs> where they were talking about how, like, um, I think it was the Gravity Falls Gossiper, and they were talking about how, like, a, a Marvel wants to, like, oh, they're standalone movies. And everybody's like, nope, it's Thor 2. It's not Thor the Darkness Returns or whatever. It's Thor 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yes. So, yeah, she's a giant computer that looks like a piano. It's like a, it's a piano? There's, like, keyboards on it. And I'm like, 
music? Sure, why not? But <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, yeah. um, make no sense. <laughs> you, can probably, you can basically not bring up Captain America to me because I will talk about Captain America forever. <laughs> I wanted to slip it in real, real. No, I just nothing you know. past me except for the things that get past me. <laughs> Um, so, you said that there weren't any characters that you gravitated to at all, but, like, maybe if you were a kid, were there any characters that you would have been, like, I liked a close? Well, just, go, just going off this first episode, probably Jem, because I really didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get anything from anybody else, because, I don't know, the other girls had, like, five lines each or something, and, yeah. um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, um, get any other, any sense of, it seemed like they all had the same personality as Jem, because they were following her, you know? How, was, how, how were they following her? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're Barbie hands. They're Barbie hands. <laughs> oh, man. The, the, the Jem dolls did not look as nice as the Barbie, in my opinion, they did not look <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, no, so probably her, just because I, I, I would have seen that and gone, ooh, strong, capable woman who's going to fight for what she wants. Yeah. And she sings. Awesome. And she sings. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, man. I know. I probably should. I keep trying to figure out, like, how much to have you guys watch because I don't want to take up too much of your time, and then uh, and then I fail. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, it's interesting either way. I mean. Yeah. Well, the thing to me is, like, how dramatic. Like, I was watching it with an eye of, like, is this enough? stuff happening in one episode for it to be interesting because when we did Total Drama Island, we were, me and Ravina were both kind of like, well, that's definitely a show that's on TV. Like, <laughs> the same reaction. And uh, I was just like, man, so much stuff happens in this one episode between mm -hmm. the fire and the... Also, who has who has lanterns and lights them like that? Why do you not have a flashlight? Yeah. What, what era <laughs> did this take place in? <laughs> what? What era is this? Yeah, I know. I was like, did people have lanterns a lot in the 80s? Because I don't... <laughs> I was born in 86. I don't really remember. <laughs> I'm not sure. They may have. I mean, like, my dad has a lantern, but he never lit it because flashlights. I mean, come on. <laughs> Maybe they didn't have batteries. It was lit with fire. <laughs> the house caught on fire. That was more realistic than when cars explode from, like, a little spark. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of funny. Yeah, I I never thought about it until like now. And but, then, oh, so you have to. What? So, uh, uh, along with all the like stuffs happening so quickly, and there's no real story development in here. I was it, st it began, and I was like, wait, so her it, it's just just one of those shows where like the father mysteriously dies, and you never find out anything about that. That's just the just just the catalyst for the rest of the whole story. Yes. Okay, I was just curious. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking, because I remember watching it and being like, oh, this is sad. Starts off really sad. Mm -hmm. and it starts off with, like, the cheering and then, like, the, the red carpet, and she come, everybody's glamorous, and then she comes out, and everybody's like, chew, ah, and then she's like, oh, I remember how it started. <laughs> Father died, and you're like, whoa, what? <laughs> I was expecting happy times, but everything is sad now. And then when, when you know, she opens the earring box and, like, the, the windows bang open. I remember being really scared. Really? <laughs> As a kid, because I didn't know what was going to happen next. Yeah. It was dark, and, like, the, they had candles. What is up with these people on fire? They had candles lit? Oh, because they didn't have electricity. That's why they had lanterns. Oh, we figured it out. <laughs> that is an excuse. They don't, don't have flashlights. Flashlights existed. <laughs> but no, fire. With all the rest of the bad luck they had in that house with everything exploding. Yeah. And we must use fire. <laughs> fire is the safest option with all these children in the house. <laughs> yeah, I never really thought about like what the other holograms did, but they all apparently live at Starlight House, and I mean, were they all foster kids? I don't even know. Like, they all are there. That was all explained as well. I was like, oh, suddenly there's a foster home. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess the I was just looking up to make sure I had the name of the foster home right, and like, there's a wiki that like explains everything, and I'm like. Is that in the show, or is that just, like, research? Because or now fan we watch every... No, no, it was, like, a wiki, so it was, like... So it was kind of true. <laughs> probably true. And it was, like, the, the father and the mother, like, started a foster home, and then I didn't read the rest of it. So, yeah. <laughs> so I think the idea is to kind of show how, like, the dad um, was very benevolent and kind and uh, helped mm -hmm. people, and then Eric Raymond is a jerky, jerky face. 
basically just presenting the yeah. exact opposite. Yeah. yeah. I know it's so funny because he keeps he always tries to get Zipper like his thug friend to do things to like make the holograms and gem nervous, but he always ruins it by like um like they set a bomb at one point. <laughs> Lovely. He tries to like. Uh, scare them, but ends up almost crashing a gargoyle down on them during a photo shoot. <laughs> like all these things, and then like more characters. Like Mishnap Central. Yeah, it was. It was like this show is crazy. I think that's why I liked it because I mean, you know, I like the more frenetic, with the exception of Captain America. I like the things. Lots of things happening. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely lots of things happening. Yeah. I can see that keeping the interest of a, of a kid's attention span, though. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. that made a lot of sense to me in terms of the pacing of the show. I was like, yeah, I could see this as definitely a really popular show that kids would definitely gravitate to. Yeah, I showed it to um, my cousin um, who was in junior high at the time. She just started high school, and I'm like, ah. um, <laughs> she uh, and she was really into it. Like, she wanted to watch more and more and more, and so that made me very happy. So it's not yeah. a show. I mean, it's not so outdated that it's not yeah. interesting to. Well, that's cool. It's um, now, or preteens, I guess. Um, so I think it's also kind of like what you're into because it's very similar to, I just thought of this now, it's very similar to a lot of the shows that they have where, you know, the kid becomes famous and, mm -hmm. you know, Victoria, Sycarly, Hannah Montana. She is kind of like a better Hannah Montana. She has uh, the best of both worlds, not really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she, has she, a lot can maintain, she can maintain an anonymity while having an alter ego, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then all the problems that come with that. And then, that's the one thing that um, we're going to wrap up soon, but I really was, and I think I'm still, like, really into that because, um, like, talking about Code Academy with Ravina where, you know, she gets to, you get to kind of live in a virtual world mm -hmm. and uh, create, you know, yourself a certain way and, like, Jem, Jericho being able to become Jem like kind of splitting off like that, I really like that. I'm realizing that I'm not something I've thought about very much, and it's not even totally obvious. Like if you even just look at the things that I, the stories that I think of and stuff, you're like, oh yeah, that duh. But just looking at it again, I was like, I really like that idea of being able to just like go be somebody else and then come back. Even like there's this anime called Ranma One Half, and uh, it's a long story, but basically when he gets hit with water, he gets turned into a girl, and then he gets hit with water again, gets turned back into a boy, like just completely, and like. Mm -hmm. Deals with it pretty well for the most part. Yeah. From what comes to the scene. But I was like, recently I've been like, that would be kind of awesome. That <laughs> would be totally. I mean, that's a. I think that's a really basic, basic human desire almost. Yeah, to be somebody else, even just for a little while, and then yeah. the story is always like, oh, this is a terrible idea. I have to switch back now. But yeah. Even like, um, oh, the Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life, where he like. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then it's like, oh, everything's terrible without me. Selfish much? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I, I mean, it's obvious that it's like, you know, an archetype or whatever, but I was like, oh, that explains a lot about my life. <laughs> <laughs> that might actually be kind of great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Can you imagine having, like, magical earrings that basically created... Another you? A whole hologram, that functioning hologram, I guess. yeah. But I don't understand. Like, did does she, she does she have control over the hologram, or does the computer have control over the hologram? Both. Well, yeah. she, she holds her earring and then says synergy, blah 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 blah, and then synergy does the thing. So, so she becomes the hologram. She she is covered by the hologram when she becomes Jim. It's weird because the clothes are totally different, and then sometimes she shows Jerica and Jim at the same time. Yeah. But but there but there's a okay they get kidnapped <laughs> they get kidnapped before the big battle of the bands and um, they have to get out so that they can win and also like one of the the children gets kidnapped by the misfits and put in a trunk and it's a long story um, and so what they do is they use a synergy to make it seem like there's lions and bears and like monsters and the police so they can use it for well, yeah, and so, then, so then they show, so there's a, there's a, a they project gem somewhere else, and one of the thugs goes to grab her and goes straight through her. Hmm. So, I don't really know how it's supposed to work. <laughs> Alright. Or like, when they're off, hanging off the cliff, and then she holds up her earring to project gem, and then gem's like, Rio, we need your help, the rock and roaster is stuck on the edge of the cliff. She says it almost exactly like that. And, uh, and Rio's like, oh no, I gotta help. 
my impressions are awesome, spot on. Yeah. Um, and I was like, how, 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 how? <laughs> no, because I, I was, I, then I thought, like, he's going to go down and see her. Like, no, not her guy in the car. So she, yeah. Him, so she, he knows it's two different people. I oh, mean, okay. He thinks it's two different people. Got it. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole episode where, like, she tries to tell him, and he gets mad at her, Kimber, her sister, which is her sister. You never find that on, like, the first episode that Kimber is her You find that later that Kimber is <laughs> You're like, okay, um, when is blonde, when is orange hair, whatever. Um, and uh, he gets mad at Kimber for being, like, a phony and a fake because she, like, accidentally dates two guys at the same time. She, like, invites them both to the same date, <laughs> same date. <laughs> See, and he, like, freaks out on her. And so then Jim's like, why well, can't I possibly tell him? I mean, Jerk is like, I can't possibly tell him because then he'll get mad. And I'm like, that is a bad reason. Because <laughs> they're like, well, we have to be careful who we tell because, you know, we can't let Synergy get into the hands of uh, the bad guys. But it's like, it's your boyfriend who is around all the time and hates the misfits. Why would he ever know? Well, they, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they could break up and then he would, like, Sell her secrets, but even that I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I just think about this way too much. Um, <laughs> what else would we do? Nothing. Just think it too much. Think about it too much. Watch Teen Beach movie for the hundredth time. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, so any final thoughts? Um. No. <laughs> no. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there, there's other things I would have gravitated to more, I think. Yeah. I always wonder what it would have been like if we had been friends, like, in elementary school. I think about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you really are into, like, even our taste in Broadway shows, like, you're into more classical, not classical, mm -hmm. but, like, stuff that is, like, classical Broadway, and I'm more into, like, weird. So, <laughs> so I mean, kind of... In retrospect, it makes sense that gem would not be, like, your thing, because it's not as grounded, I guess. I, I would hate to say conventional, because I'm, I'm, no, I'm not... It's not conventional. It's, yeah. I don't know what the right word is, but... Like, I liked Adventure Time more than this. Yeah, but I think Adventure Time is not just trying to sell toys and fit into boys' action shows. It's also trying to be weird on purpose. Mm -hmm. Not but like you know, weird for the the fun of being weird, and and Jem was more like trying to follow more of a linear story, maybe kind of more like repeat the same story five hundred times. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I just didn't pick up a whole lot of interestingness for me out yeah. of it. Yeah, but it did. It did have like this feminist slant, like you know, like the mm -hmm. one of the main bad guys is, is dude, and he's like kind of the leader, sort of of the mystery. Mm -hmm. He's not. He's like supposedly in charge of them, but they never listen to him. <laughs> but you know, and I was like, you know, that's interesting to me. I mean, my whole imaginary world was constructed a lot on that because there was. Yeah. No, I, I actually I remembered you like mentioning the show very frequently. Yeah, probably. I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one in particular, I remember you talking about. It. I was always curious. Yeah. What it was. Well, maybe we can uh, watch more of it later, and and you can see. That would be interesting. A whole story instead of like half. Of yeah. Instead of having half. In the Holograms Part Two. <laughs> that for the future. All right. So that's about it. Um, I totally loved him in the Holograms, and if you have a kid who's really into like strong women and action, like the Black Widow, not at all like the Black Widow. <laughs> um, you know, it, I recommend it. It's fun. It's also, you can also watch it and be like, wow, that animation does not make sense. Also, that person has the wrong color shirt on now, and that face does not belong on that person either. <laughs> a drinking game. Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's about it. Um, we will be doing a three-minute conversation later in the month, I think. And I'm working on some more stuff. So I'll talk to you later. Hands. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>